Hi students and welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, Organisation of Living Things. This is video number 24, our penultimate video, and we're going to just compare open and closed transport systems. Specifically, the learning outcome is that students can compare the structures and function of transport systems in animals and plants, including, but not limited to, open and closed transport systems in animals. So one of the ways that we can compare circulatory systems is just to look at a couple of examples of different types of animals and get a bit of an idea about what's going on in the systems of their bodies. So if we look first of all at fish, then we'll notice that with fish, we've just got this single circuit. So whilst we have a double circuit in mammals, so you can kind of see that located over here, we've got this double circuit, which is the one that we're probably most familiar with because it's the one that we've looked at ourselves. And we've also done, you may also have carried out a dissection to have a look at the structures of the heart, perhaps even a pluck, to get an idea of how the blood moves through the system of a mammal and birds are very similar. In fish, we've just got this single circuit. So important exchange is happening in the gills. That's where the oxygen is going to be extracted from the water. Very, very high surface area to volume ratio as water carries less oxygen than air does. And so that, that needs to be a very efficient exchange process. And then the capillaries, are, which are located around all the body tissues to allow for that exchange, that allow for oxygen in particular from what's been picked up in the gills to the fact that the, it'll be deoxygenated once it's passed through all of those very important muscle tissues. In amphibians and reptiles, we see some minor variations on the themes that we see in the mammal. And you can see just by looking at some slight variations in the way that these circuits are set up, we can see some of the similarities and some of the differences between these different types of circulatory systems. Notice that whether they're single circuits or double circuits, each of these represents a closed system. That is the series of tubes that are connected to the main pumping chamber. So that's obviously the, the pumping organ is going to be the heart. And all of the tubes that are basically connected to this in one way or another are continuous. So therefore, blood that's flowing through each of these systems is going to pass through the whole system. It's going to cycle around. It's not going to drain out anywhere else. But not all animals have systems that are like this. Some smaller animals can do with a system that is open. Animals like invertebrates have simple open circulatory systems. So the blood or whatever it is that takes that place of blood, so sometimes that's a hemolymph. Hopefully this word kind of gives you a little bit of a suggestion about what this might be. Hemo from hemoglobin, so we know that's a characteristic of blood. A lymph is that kind of fluid, that watery fluid that is associated with the lymphatic system, which is our system that fights diseases in the body. And so a sort of combination of these sorts of fluids is what tends to move around in the open system of many invertebrates. Many of these are less efficient. There's, there's no sort of specific pump. We can maybe talk about a heart-like organ that may be associated in some particular types of invertebrates, moving material around, but it doesn't have the same sort of pumping facility that we'd see in many of the animals with closed systems. There can also be a separate gas exchange system that's not dependent on blood flow. And we talked about, particularly for some of the invertebrates, some of the insects that we looked at, the trachea tubes or spiracles and these are important structures that are part of the gas exchange process that's allowing gases to move from the outside to the inside of the organism and also to then exchange between the different tissues that require those gases or for them like a carbon dioxide to be released. In closed systems such as the vertebrates that we just looked at, they uh, have blood that is flowing constantly through the blood vessels pumped by the heart that continues to circulate and isn't being lost anywhere. It doesn't drain out anywhere. This leads to a much more efficient exchange of nutrients, gases and waste. So one of the important differences when you're talking about these two different systems is that efficiency that we see in closed systems over 
open systems. And that's one of the reasons why larger organisms tend to have closed systems, whereas some of the very small ones can get away with an open system. Here's a small representation of the difference between an open and a closed system. So you can see an insect of the group Arthropoda, an open system, so that hemolymph in the sinuses, the surrounding organs kind of draining into, into general areas rather than specifically moving through closed tubes. There's a heart-like structure that's, that's giving the fluid a little bit of a nymph as it goes around. But a lot of these segmented organisms don't have the same organization of tissues and organs that we see in some of the other animals. It's not a simple case of invertebrates have open systems and vertebrates have closed systems because we do also see in things like the segmented worms, the annelida, that some of these also have a closed system. So there will be something that allows the blood to flow or allows the fluid to flow through the system to transport materials throughout the organism. And perhaps there might even be a heart-like organ that's doing some of the pumping, that's doing some of the distribution of the fluid throughout the body. So we do see lots of variations on themes when we look at open and closed systems. As you'll see for a lot of the last section of module two, using comparison tables is a really good way of trying to summarize a lot of the key information that's part of these systems. So we have to compare open and closed circulatory systems. So let's pick humans as a nice example, because that's one that we're relatively familiar with. And then an open circulatory system, which could be some of the ones that we've talked about previously, or perhaps a snail. It has a simple pump in the closed circulatory system of a human. We have a double pump. So we've got two pumping chambers as well as two collecting chambers. So a four chambered heart and that's going to move blood around the body in that closed loop. When we looked at fish and reptiles, we saw that perhaps there might only be two chambers or possibly even three chambers that are involved in collecting and moving blood through the system. But in the human one that we've looked at, it's those four chambers with the two pumping chambers, the double pump. In our open circulatory system, we have hemolymph. We have some sort of fluid that is moving towards the front of the animal that then drifts towards the back. So you're getting this kind of little kick along to, to flow, but there's no closed tubes in the same way that we see this in the human. So in the human, blood circulates around in a closed loop. And for humans, as I said, we've got this double system. So we've got one loop that includes the heart and the lungs, and then the other loop that includes the heart and then basically all of the other body organs. Without this closed system and this uh, strong pump, the pressure and the circulation rates in open circulatory systems are much lower and much higher in the closed systems. In the open system, we have tissue and large spaces that get filled with the fluid. So this just leaks out often into some of these larger spaces. Whereas we actually need to have diffusion, sometimes facilitated diffusion that maybe is moving some of the important nutrients from the transport system, the blood, into the cells where it's needed, but also some of the waste that's going to come from the opposite direction. So cellular waste products that are going to then be moved through diffusion or active transport from the cells into the blood where they can uh, be transported to some of the organs that are involved in uh, processing and removing wastes from the body. There's a one-way flow out of the heart, which refills like a sponge. That's the kind of system of open system that we have. And because of all of these things, the open circulatory system is a much better suited system for small organisms. In the closed system, we have a series of tubes and vessels carrying blood away from the heart. That's the arteries to the cells and then transporting material back to the heart through the veins. Valves are present in a lot of those veins to prevent the blood flowing the wrong way. So we don't want it just drifting around. We want it conti continually flowing in one direction through the body. Because of the efficiency of this system, it's much better. It's much more suited to large animals, particularly very, very big animals. Think about giraffes and how much pressure they would need from their heart 
to pump blood up through that very long neck into their heads for their brains. So this is a nice way of comparing open and closed circulatory systems. Thanks for watching.